Good evening, everyone. Good evening, church. It's nice to have you joining to um, to church this evening. So, um, Pastor Bimba has been preaching a number of things during the year. Um, I can remember him talking about uh, be on the go. That's one of the messages he preached this this year. Um, then recently, too, <clears throat> Pastor Bimba has declared miracles in our midst and all those things. So, um, so we are going to be talk, preaching or talking things and uh, that pertains to um, that aspect. So, can we just have a short prayer in Jesus' name? Lord, thank you for giving us the opportunity to hear your word this evening. We pray that you open our eyes to see your word. We pray that our hearts are open to receive your word in the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. So uh, if you can, please turn your Bibles to, um, to Matthew chapter 7, um, verse 7. It says, keep on asking. I'm reading from NLT version. It says, keep on asking and you'll receive what he asks for. Keep on seeking and you'll, re- and you'll find. Keep on knocking and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks, receives. Everyone who seeks, finds. And to everyone who knocks, the door will be open. This is Jesus Christ talking here. And um, the word of God has a guarantee. Uh, so he's saying that when you knock, the door will be open. When you seek, you'll find. Uh, so, <clears throat> so we'll be talking around um, around all of this this morning. So, um, one of the first one of the things that Pastor Bimbo preached some time ago was uh, be is for us to be on the go. And uh, what does that really mean? In, 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 what does it mean to be on the go? Now, a, a number of us, God has given us instructions about certain things, um, about what you're supposed to be doing, um, about starting something, about continuing something, about improving something. It is important that we do those things because when we keep on doing those things, um, we'll start seeing results. Uh, there are also some things that we know naturally that we're supposed to do. One of them is being faithful. Maybe you have something that you are doing currently. I think it's important that we are faithful at it. Uh, even God might not have even given you specific instructions in those aspects. But because you know that that is exactly what you are supposed to be doing, then it's important that we are faithful at it. Now, I'm still coming back to uh, the scripture which we read at first, which is Matthew 7.7. 7. Um, so a, a number of times, people um, have something that they, are, they desire, uh, a miracle, one way or the other. Uh, maybe uh, a miracle in, in, um, in business. You want uh, a boom in your business. It could be a miracle in, um, in relationship. It could be a miracle in career or in different aspects of life. So, and in getting these things, I think there are different ways in which you can, which could ask or seek all of these things. And that's why Jesus is saying here, he says, when you seek, you will find. Say for everyone, not some people, but everyone who seeks, finds. So, um, <clears throat> so how exactly do we seek? Um, KJV talks about seek and then find. NLT says, uh, if you keep seeking, then you will find. Uh, it might look like a simple word as it were, but it entails a, a little more. And I will be sharing some examples in the Bible how people seek for what they wanted and they got it. Uh, so, um, <clears throat> can we open our Bibles too? If you have one, hopefully, um, hopefully you are you're in a room, your your house, and not in a car. But if you can, if you cannot, it's fine. So I will just read from here. I want to open to. Um, to first second kings so from verse 20 it says says so the servants took him home and his mother held him on her lap but around noon time okay so let me just give a little um, preamble about this story so elijah prayed for a, a, a woman uh, who, who was looking for a child, a male child, and the woman eventually got a male child. But after some time, the child was sick, and then the child eventually died. So I'll just read. So he says, So the servant took him home, and his mother held him on her lap. But around no time, he held, around no time, he died. 
She carried him up and laid him on the bed of the man of God, then shut the door, left him there. So she sent a message to her husband, send one of the servants and a donkey so that I can hurry to the man of God and come right back. Why go today? He asked. Is it, it is neither a new moon festival nor a Sabbath. But she said it will be all right. So she saddled, saddled the donkey and said to her servant, hurry, don't slow down unless I tell you to. As she approached the man of God at Mount Carmel, Elisha saw her in the, in the distance. He said to Gehazi, look, the woman from Shunem is coming. Run, to, run out to meet her and ask her, is everything all right with you, your husband and your child? Yes, the woman told Gehazi, everything is fine. But when she came to the man of God at the mountain, she fell to the ground before him and caught hold of his feet. Gehazi began to push her away. But the man of God said, leave her alone. She's deeply troubled. But God has not, God has not told me what it is. Then she said, did I ask you for a son, my Lord? And didn't I say, don't deceive me and get my hopes up? Then Elisha said to Gehazi, get up, travel and take my staff, go. Don't talk to anyone along the way. Go quickly and lay my lay the staff on the child's face. But the boy's mother said, As surely as the Lord lives and you yourself live, I won't go home on, unless you go with me. So Elisha returned with her. And then it says that Gehazi returned. So I'm skipping to 32. When Elisha arrived, the child was indeed dead, lying there on the prophet's bed. He went in alone. Then to 35, it says, um, Elisha got up, walked back and forth across the room once and stretched himself again on the child. This time the boy sneezed seven times, opened his eyes. So the boy came back alive. Now, this is an example of somebody who is seeking. Um, so the woman, when the incident happened, while some people cry, which is okay to cry, um, she knew exactly that God could do something about it. And she wasn't waiting for the man of God to hear something and say, ah, ah, after all, I know a man of God, I know Elisha, so God will talk to Elisha and this and that. So, in fact, if you study the story quite well, the woman did not even tell the husband what was even happening. Just told the husband to get a horse, a donkey rather, and a servant. So she went all the way to get what she wanted. And this is a miracle. So Pastor Bimba has been talking in recent times about miracles happening. So... I think there are two uh, classes of miracle in a sense, talking about how people achieved it. There are miracles which people go for, and there are miracles that people wait for. So you could either wait or you could either go for it. Um, <clears throat> talking in that aspect, I also, um, I mean, I mean, I mean it's, there's nothing wrong in waiting for God to do things, and there are times that God will just do things naturally without you taking any steps in particular. Yes, and I will also um, read a scripture in, in that regard. Um, and that is... Okay, so, uh, I mean, th there was a time that Jesus Christ, th there was a, a, a... Jesus Christ walked into a city and that instant, there was somebody who was dead then. And while, I mean, it was a coincidence that Jesus Christ came uh, into the scene when they were carrying the dead uh, to go and bury the dead. The, the, the dead was the only child of the woman, the only son of the woman and Jesus Christ uh, when they lay hands on the child and the child got up. That was a miracle. But the woman did not particularly desire as it were or seek or looked for Jesus for the miracle. It just happened. And that happens sometimes. But then um, Jesus also expelled us to seek just like this woman seeked. So I, we're going to be sharing some, some examples of people who actually went for what they wanted and got what they wanted because they seeked, because they looked, because they knocked the door and the door was open. Uh, so let's also read, um, um, it's also a popular story in the Bible, uh, Matthew 15 from 22 to 28. La shatana man La cro la hasa sisi kela gada bahasha li ko sita akise elish tu ethela halos amen. So Matthew fifteen twenty two it says a gentile woman who has lived 
there came to him pleading, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David, for my daughter is possessed by a demon that torments her severely. But Jesus gave her no reply, not even a word. Then the disciples urged him to send her away. Tell her, go away. They said, she is bothering us with all her begging. Then Jesus said to the woman, I was sent only to help God's lost sheep, the people of Israel. But she came and washed him, pleading again, Lord, help me. Jesus responded, it isn't right to take the food from the children and throw it to the dogs. She replied, that that's true, Lord, but even the dogs are allowed to eat the scraps that fall beneath their master's table. Then Jesus responded, this is what I like so much. He says, dear woman, Jesus said to her, your faith is great. Your request is granted. Now, initially, it looks as though Jesus Christ didn't want to help her, but Jesus Christ wanted to. Uh, but because Jesus Christ lived under the law, which means that the, the Jews would not have anything to do with the Gentiles, as it were. But because the woman pressed further, uh, now, in the New Testament, you don't have to do that because already everything is, is ours. Everything is, 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 is ours already because Christ has paid for all these things. And whether you are Jew or Gentile, we have access to God. He said we should come boldly to the throne of grace that might find, help to, uh, find grace to help in a time of need. But what the story, uh, the, the, the baseline of this story is that the woman sits even though she, it wasn't even a right. So... Um, <clears throat> And I believe that if, if, during this season, we are having prayer, watch, a lot of time we are pr we're praying. And, and, and that is actually a lot of work, praying. Uh, for example, Pastor Bimba has been praying a, a whole lot, lots, like 30 minutes in every three hours. That is a lot of work, I can guarantee you of that. Um, so, and power has been generated. So a number of times people generate power, but they don't channel it well. They don't express and, and use the power to get the result. And I believe that God is going to help us this evening to see how we can maximize this season, how we can get the best from God in this season. God is always faithful. So I, I'll be mentioning some key things about how we can maximize this season, how we can press in and get what God has for us. So we already talked about be on the go, which Pastor Bimbo talked, preached about some time ago. Uh, we also talked, which, uh, which we read some verses in that regard, how people went, deliberately went for what they wanted. How people decided to seek and they got miracles just because they took a step further by being on the go. I mean, those people could have stayed back and say, oh, maybe someday, somehow, some, somewhere, something will happen. Like the woman who, who lost a son could have sat down and said, maybe Elijah will come. Maybe God will speak to Elijah. In fact, even in the scripture, Elijah was saying that God had not even told him. But then, a miracle happened there. So are you, are you on the go? Are you following the instructions that God has told you? Are you using your initiative and taking steps? Because all these are actually important. Because God has declared through our man of God that there will be miracles. But it's also important for us to take necessary steps to achieve what God has for us. So uh, another thing we're going to be talking about is, um, is clear vision. God has put a lot of plans in, in us. God has put some ideas in each and every one of us. Uh, but it's also important that we have clarity on those things. And that's one of the reasons why while we pray, Pastor Bimbo keeps saying that we should jot things down. We should write things down because ideas, inspiration, things to do will come up through, during those prayer times. And it's not just enough for us to jot them down. You have to go back to them, think about them. Okay, why is God saying this to me? What exactly am I supposed to do? And when you start thinking and start planning, more ideas, more things will start coming. Because when we have a clear vision, then achieving results becomes easier when you have it laid down say oh okay god has told me to do this god has told me to do that you do more research you do things here and there and that way we have more results and the will of god the plan of god for our lives come into fruition so we pray so we're praying we plan so we're planning we think what exactly how do i go about it how do i go about it what exactly am i supposed to do Also, um, the third thing I'm going to be talking about is humility. 
Now, I'd like us to open to the um, book of Luke, chapter 19, verse 1 to 10. Lash teki susu kelash alakos eladish eti edlasi anando la hasata la hasha. So I'm reading from NLT. Um, it says Jesus entered Jericho and made his way through the town. There was a man there named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector in the region, and he had become very rich. He tried to get a look at Jesus, but he was too short to see the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed this sycamore fig tree beside the road for Jesus was going to pass that way. When Jesus came by, he looked up at Zacchaeus and called him by his name. Zacchaeus, he said, quick, come down. I must be a guest in your home today. Zacchaeus quickly climbed down and took Jesus to his house in great excitement and great joy. But the people were displeased. He has gone to, the, to be the guest of a notorious sinner. They grumbled. Meanwhile, Zacchaeus stood before the Lord and said, I will give half. Okay. So, uh, what I just want to bring out here is humility. Humility goes a very long way in achieving or in maximizing uh, the, the, the times that we are. Because a lot, of, a lot of things are actually happening in church at the moment. You cannot be praying and joining those prayer sessions and without having a lot of manifestation, a lot of things changing our life. It's, it's just impossible for things not to happen. But it's also possible for us to generate a lot of power and yet have minimal results. Or we could also have maximum results or a lot of results when we do some certain things or when we practice some certain things. So you can imagine, just picture it. Jesus Christ is walking. There are loads, thousands of people following Jesus Christ. But somebody was humble enough. Just imagine that maybe, um, um, let's say Baba Deboe is now is going from just passing by, maybe going from um, just walking on airport road or something, and uh, or maybe Baba Deboe goes to Kano. Then someone like uh, what is it called? Someone like um, the richest man in Africa, um, Dangote, goes and run. People will be wondering, people will be taking pictures. See, see Dango they running. What was Dango they running for? And Dango they climbing the tree just to take a look at Jesus. And the result was it good? Yes, it was. So Zacchaeus, God saved that day in a sense. Salvation came to his house. He repented. He said he was going to give back to people the things that he has, he has stolen from them in a sense. And and um, when God is doing things, uh, there, there's usually a need for humility. Um, there's usually a need for humility. I, a lot of relationships have been broken because somebody's unwilling to say, I'm sorry. Somebody's unwilling to let them let themselves down so that they can be taught or, or, or do some certain things. They feel proud. Say, ah, no, me to this person. It cannot happen. Me to that person. Why would this person be, be the one to teach me this particular thing? Why would this, that social person be the one to uh, do this thing for me? Only if people could be humble during this season and even continually, they will maximize a lot and get a lot from God. Even Jesus Christ had to humble himself to become a man, to achieve what he wanted to do. Jesus Christ was baptized by his cousin, John the Baptist, a mere man. It takes a lot of humility. A lot. Oh, my shiki and the susu preda hashatella get up a hashatella hala susu palahaya hanandro kelas. That people who age is a, bar is a barrier for them. They feel like they cannot learn from people who are younger. They feel like they cannot learn from people who are their age mates. And because of that, they've lost a lot of things. So there might be a sort of wisdom sort of things that you could learn or gain from people and during this season. So only if you will be humble, you could get a lot of things. A miracle could, could, could come from there. Yes, humility goes a long way. Just like Zacchaeus. A lot of people are pressing behind, around Jesus, going, moving around him. But well, he was humble enough. You, could you imagine the shame he would have gone through? Could you imagine the ridicule uh, he would have gone through? He would most likely have stayed on the tree for minutes at least. Where people will sin and say, ah, what is this one? What is this guy doing here? People make jest of him. But he knew what he was doing. 
and he got what he wanted. Um, Shala hasosu bala hasheta da handos. La crawl a haki atis ilo shooti in the susu kweta halsh. Ma kasa tila hase ki alas. So we'll move on to the next thing, uh, which is hard work. I know in charismatic circles, we don't talk a lot about hard work. But hard work is very important. It's very vital. And I can tell you that um, the prayer which I have been having for someone to be the up, 30 minutes, and at least 30 minutes within every three hours, I can guarantee it's hard work. It's a lot of work. So a number of times we attribute grace to a substitute for hard work. Say, oh, because I am grace, that's why I don't do a lot of work. Which is not true. Let's look at the life of Jesus. I'm going to read a short, um, short Bible verse here. We'll be reading a lot of Bible verses today. Um, so let's go to John chapter 4, verse 3 to 8. John 4, 3 to 8. It says, so it says, so talking about Jesus here, so, so he left Judea and returned to Galilee. He had to go through Samaria on the way. Eventually, he came to, Sam, Samar, to the Samaritan village of Sikar, near the field that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired, tired from the long walk, sat wearily beside the well about noontime. Soon, a Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, please give me a drink. She was alone at the time because his disciple had gone into the village to buy some food. So Jesus was not tired because he was probably playing table tennis or doing something. He was tired because he was doing God's work. Uh, when you're hard working, you get tired. Now, let's even compare the life of Jesus to, uh, to the life of John the Baptist. John the Baptist, which was also hard working in a sense, stayed in the wilderness. People came to meet John the Baptist. Jesus Christ is graced much more than anybody. I mean, you can't compare the grace that is on Jesus to the grace on John the Baptist. But yet, he wouldn't stay in one place. He would go out, walk, take long walks, move from one town to another, move from one village to another. That is work. That is hard work. So, during this season, I don't just want us to do prayer alone. As you're praying, do some work. Do some research. Is it business? Is it career? Whatever. Is, is there a plan that God has put in your hand? Do some serious work where that, that is concerned. I mean, Jesus Christ would have just stayed back. What he needed to do was just, I me mean, would get beaten by Israel who are healed. Then he could have died. But then he went around, he went around. People were even following him. He would still go from one village to the other. That was, that was, that's hard work. Then also let's look at um, um, Paul. Uh, so we, we can open to 1 Corinthians 15, 10. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10. So he says, But whatever I am now, it is all because God poured out his special favor on me, and not without result. For I have worked harder, harder than any of the other apostles. Yet, it was not I, but God, who was working through me by his grace. So the grace of God actually makes us work harder. So contrary to what some people think, that, okay, because I have the grace of God, I don't have to work, do plenty of things like other people do. I just do little and I get results. Fine. God will multiply, but also work hard. Do a lot of work. The woman who, 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 the Elisha story, can guarantee that the woman did a lot of work there before she got a miracle in a sense. 
If somebody might say, oh, it's in the Old Testament. Okay. But I mean, Jesus Christ himself did a lot of work, even in his ministry. Paul did a lot of work as well. And that's why they had a lot of results. We'll also be talking about taking initiative. You should take initiative, which also talks about uh, someone being on a go, which means that, okay, you think, what exactly am I supposed to do? How exactly am I supposed to maximize this season? Uh, just like, I'm going to go back to the story of Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus is just one amazing person in the Bible. Yes, he is. So he took initiative while everybody was walking naturally, like, let's just follow Jesus. Let's just follow God. Let's just follow him. Let's just follow Jesus. He's the Messiah. He said, he thought about it. He said, oh, so this Jesus Christ is going to take, walk through a path. So he decided to go ahead of time. He went ahead of time. So he wasn't just humble. There are a number of people who are humble, but they don't take initiative. He was humble. He was also initiative. He took initiative. So he went and he thought up to himself, probably asked, okay, Jesus Christ is moving from point A. He's going to point B. So what part is he going to take? So he, he, he checked, probably went on Google. Okay, so if you are going from A to B, what, what part are you going to take? What routes are possible? We say, okay, so there are like five routes. So out of the five routes, the, yeah, there is no way you can miss. You must pass here. Just like when you are going to, let's say you are going to the airport, there are different ways in which you can pass, but there are some places that you cannot do without passing. So he said, okay, then he look, how exactly can I even get there? Zacchaeus is a short man. He had some disadvantages, but he was able to look beyond the disadvantage that he has. So, okay, if I should go like every other person, there is a high chance I will never see this man. So he thought to himself, what can I do? So the path that Jesus Christ was going to take, he learned it. Also, since it was short, what advantage can I take? Let me climb a tree, which also involves humility. So he took some initiative. So during this time, like we said earlier, that God is doing a lot in our lives. We are changing, changing, changing. Ideas are popping up in our, in our hearts. God is setting up things for us to do. So how exactly are we maximizing and what exactly are we doing to maximize all, all of these things? So what initiative are we taking to enjoy all that, that God has provided for us? So he took initiative and that's one of the reasons why he was able to see Jesus and salvation came to his house. So are we taking initiative? Are we? Lashi to susu kada hala hashti la kosa keda bala hake. Handos ela grados ela grados ela hasi ketisa. Laha it eos eat ink us ik it ek ith ala sus de la hashte. Amen. Yes, so another thing that we have to pay attention to is being bold. So, um, Many a times, God has given people instructions. God has given people ideas of what to do. But yeah, because of being timid, because of being uh, afraid, as it were. Say, ah, if I say this out, if I try to carry this out, what will people say? How will people perceive me? So because of that, people have not done what they needed to do. Look at the story of the woman who, um, who... We read in Ma in Matthew chapter fifteen, the woman who, who had a, who had um, her child possessed by a demon. I mean, she had a lot of reasons. She's a gentile, a lot of reasons not to have even taken a step. But she decided to eventually. And even during the process, there were a number of obstacles that she met along the way. Even Jesus Christ said that um, he sent to the to the Jews and not to the Gentiles. But she still insisted and went all the way. I mean, just put yourself in that kind of shoes. She will be feeling somehow. How can you compare yourself to a dog? But it was necessary for her to get what she wanted. So, God might have put some ideas in you, things that might look stupid, or if it is divine, then go for it, do it. Do it because it's an instruction from God. So be bold. 
Don't be timid. We shouldn't be bold during this season. We shouldn't be timid during this season. We should be bold. Uh, the things that God has, uh, is telling us, things that the things could be and should be a lot bigger than what we could even imagine. I said, why? But then, if God has said it, then it has the power. He has, has also made the power available for us to achieve the things that he has put in us. And then, association. Uh, it's important that the people we associate with are, 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 are good people. On Sunday, Pastor Bimbo was talking about um, about how, uh, like, like imagining yourself telling somebody that you've not prayed for a while, and the person is like, ah, even me, I've not prayed. So uh, you could tell how association could go a very long way. I mean, there are people that when you want to, uh, usually, when people make choices, it's usually people. Some people talk to people around them and these and that. They advise them and and the likes. But if you have, if you don't have godly people around you, you don't have people who have uh, the mind of success which God wants for us, and then you might be limited. So God is popping up an idea in you, an idea, something that would change generation, change lives, but then they're just killing it around you. So it's difficult for people to grow if they don't associate with important people. So you have to be deli deliberate about all these things. You might have to change your friends, get in some circles deliberately, and there are different means in which you could get into people's circles. Humility is one of the ways. Somebody might be older than you, younger than you, but you need something from them. So as you share with them, you could even do it by giving. When you give things to people continually, offering your services, they see that, oh, this person is willing to, end. They, they can see a value that you are giving to them, a value that you are offering for them. And because of that, they will also be open-minded to you. So association is key. For us to be able to maximize what God asked for us in this season. And also learning continually, continuous learning. We have to keep learning as believers. We have to keep learning. We have to broaden our knowledge, our horizon, so that we can maximize everything that God has for us. If you read Second, Second, um, Second Kings that we read earlier, if you read the, the whole story, you will see that... Um, the woman, the woman provided a room for Elijah and there was a table, a lamp for Elijah to study. Elijah was a man of God. Well, yeah, he also studied. I don't know whether it was just scripture he was studying or what. I mean, he was learning. Anyway, so in our field, in things in general, it's important that we learn. Because when God supplies his, uh, when God supplies his power, when God supplies his, his wisdom, the preparation that we already have goes a long way in how we are able to manifest the will of God. If, let me give an example, if, um, if everything I have is taken away from me, and someone, of course, even, okay, if everything I have is taken away from me, and I'm giving $10,000, and let me use somebody else, somebody in Kings as an example, let's say Pastor Boye, He's also giving the same, everything that he has is taken away from him and he's also giving the same amount. Check back some yes time. He will be able to do much more than I will be able to because he has developed himself. He has learned some arts. He has learned some things. So the, 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 the way we develop our mind goes a long way in how God is able to walk through us. It goes a long way in how God is able to manifest in our lives. So God is able, is willing to do, go all the way for us. But our mind can be a limitation to us. So it's important that we keep learning. So as we are praying, keep learning, keep searching, keep doing researches. Be on the go. Send out the proposal. Check, do a need assessment. No all problems are actually spiritual. Some of them are physical. So I've even researched enough to even know that this thing I'm even going through is even a natural solution to it. Of course, there's nothing stopping you from believing God in supernatural, for supernatural experiences. But not everything actually has to be spiritual in a sense. Learning. So maybe probably God, God has put an idea in you uh, to do something, you don't even have the funds and you are believing God for the money. There could be a, a, a maybe an ETF fund or something available somewhere. 
just you just need to check it out on the on the internet and you have that information and because of that you're able to fulfill the will of God because you are learning so friends I believe that God is doing a lot and he's going to be doing a lot in our life especially in 2021 people will be doing a lot of things I believe so so when we put all these things in practice I believe we are going to maximize the plan of God for our lives Going to be, we are going to be able to achieve a whole lot. So I hope, uh, I hope this has blessed us. So uh, thank you for joining in. So um, we'll be taking um, offerings. So the account is going to be displayed on the screen. So you can uh, send your offering, your tithe and your offerings electronically. Um, so you can do so. It's scriptural for us to give. Um, it's the will of God that when what the word of God is preached that we communicate natural resources when spiritual impartation or spiritual things like this are done so it's it's a it's a it's a Christian duty for us to do such things so uh, please do well to give like I said the account details are displayed uh, online so let's just have a short word of prayer thank you Jesus we give you glory thank you for your word thank you because your word is going to transform us I would not just be a hearer, but would be a doer of your word. And thank you for uh, the thank you for giving the giving us the opportunity to sow, to give an offering and for those who are giving offerings and for those who are giving their tithes. We thank you and we pray that as we give as we give this evening, that would uh, that we experience increase in every aspect of our life. That our thing our the. the the things in our life will increase bountifully in the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' my name we have prayed. All right, so a few announce, announcements. So there's a prayer watch uh, that's been going on. Uh, so kindly do well to join in. And that's even keys in a lot in the things that has been preached today. So, um, <clears throat> so do well to join a prayer watch. Um, it's 30 minutes in every three hours. So you don't have to join everyone, but the ones you can join, do well to join. Uh, then also, uh, we'll be having our next service at um, Top Rank Hotel, Utako. So if you can join us physically, please do so. And if you can't join us, probably you're not in Abuja or somewhere else. But if you can't join physically, then also you can join us online on Mixer on YouTube as well. Our YouTube, uh, if you search for Kings of Abuja, there's a channel that is dedicated that is the channel for Kings of Abuja which you can join our services you can stream it live and also mix it out as mix it out slash Kings of Abuja so we'll be very happy to have you around um, thank you very much have a beautiful evening